Uh, now, what, what's the purpose of all of this? Is this something that we can use? Do we have to put energy into this, or can we get energy out of this? Get energy out of it. Right. So what? So far, this doesn't really make sense. What I should actually do is we can stick a light bulb across here, and the light bulb can harness the energy of the uh, electrons that are passing by um, to provide the electrical energy that makes this run. Another name for a galvanic cell is battery, basically. This is basically how batteries work in appliances. They're based on um, setting up uh, batteries have uh, little separate compartments um, that have spontaneous reactions happening, um, which allows the electrons to spontaneously move from one terminal up to the other terminal of the battery, and as that does that, it moves through the device and provides uh, energy that can be used to run the device. Okay, so the light bulb here would um, light up. Now, one problem with this is, uh, over time, um, what's going to happen to this cell? Um, the way I've drawn it is this cell going to be becoming more positive or more negative? More negative. Because the electrons are moving over here, and this is going to become more and more positive. However, that means that the, this, this whole process would shut down very quickly. Because once this becomes negative, that would repel these negatives over here. The, these negatives over here would be repelled. Um, so we, have to, uh, we don't want this to just shut down. We want this to provide a continuing source of electrons. So we need to have something that's going to cancel out these negative charges. Do you guys know what do we do to, to keep that? Salt bridge. That's what the salt bridge is for. That's right. Well, what does the word salt mean in chemistry? Ions. <laughs> that's a good answer. Salt is just code for ions. A salt is just an ionic compound. Okay, so um, of course the classic example of a salt is sodium chloride. Um, but that's just one example of an ionic compound. Is that what you guys are using? Yeah. Okay, so I'll use that. That actually is important. We want to use ions that won't interfere with this reaction. We want to use ions that are not actually going to be oxidized or reduced. Um, so maybe potassium bromide would be better here. Well, what direction is the potassium going to be moving in here then? Towards the anode or towards the cathode? The cathode. Which one? The cathode. Yeah, how do you know? Right, or another way to put it is to keep it from becoming more negative. Um, without the salt bridge, the electrons here would make this more and more negative. Well, every time that starts happening, that pulls some potassium over, which basically um, nips that in the butt. So this never does become negative because the potassiums are being pulled over at even the slightest hit of a negative. So the potassiums would move this way, and for the, by the same token, the bromides would move this way. After all, this is losing more and more electrons, and we need to replace that negative charge. So the bromides can pull in a negative charge here. Putting another way, which way are the cations moving? Towards the anode or towards the cathode? Towards the, the cation? Yeah, which way are the, the cations in the salt bridge moving? Towards the cathode. Yeah, who is the cation here? Yeah. Potassium, sorry. Yeah, so the cation is the positive ion, right? And the anion is the negative ion, right? All right, and, and I just wanted to mention that's another mnemonic. In any type of cell, cations always move towards cathodes, and anions always move towards anodes. Um, so it's convenient that those words uh, sound similar. Okay, we now, we now can uh, figure out why that is as well. At the cathode, we're always gaining electrons, and cations have to come in to cancel out that charge. And at the anode, we're always losing electrons, and anions have to move over to cancel out that. So cations always move towards cathodes, and anions always move towards anodes. Um, many problems that you don't really need to worry about the salt bridge. This is just a technicality that keeps the charge from accumulating. But you might actually see test questions that ask you in what direction are the ions moving. So it's important to know what, what's going on with that salt bridge. All right, but that's not the main part of the reaction. All right, um, another key thing here is to figure out um, who is the positive electrode and who is the negative electrode. Um, so, which of these should we call the positive and which do, we, do you think we should call the negative electrode? The actual electrode? Yeah. Um. So, for example, you know, these are like terminals in a battery, right? And in your battery, there's a positive terminal and a negative terminal. So, we have to figure out which of these is the positive and the negative terminal in this battery. So, would the cathode be the negative one because it's gaining all the electrons? Or would it still be... Let's try to work that out. Okay. okay. So, um, which direction, uh, so they, who, where are the electrons moving towards, the anode or the cathode? The cathode. 
Yeah. Do they want to move there? Well, yeah. well, that's the why the cathode has to actually be positive. Right. Because otherwise, the electrons otherwise wouldn't want to be moving here. Yeah. Otherwise, the electrons wouldn't want to be moving here. OK. And by the same token, the electrons want to move away from here. So this must be our negative electrode. OK. Uh, I don't think these really stand for positive and negative charges. It's better to think of this as the high potential electrode and the low potential electrode. Uh, but it turns out that just like electrons want to move towards positive charges, they also want to move towards positive potentials. And they want to move away from negative potentials. So as a mnemonic, we could kind of think of these as charges. The point here is just the electrons here, uh, after the half reaction, end up at a high potential. And the electrons here, uh, the, the, um, and the, uh, the, the bound electrons here are at a high potential, and the bound electrons here are at a low potential. So the electrons are moving from here to here. But as a mnemonic, we can just think that electrons like to move towards a plus and away from a minus. OK. Now, let's find the cell potential. How would we find the cell potential for this reaction? we find that cell potential? Um, we add the voltages for some of the voltages. So what calculation should I do here? Um, 0.34. Wait, is that the equation with the E equals But this e is, e if you want the total cell potential, we just have to add the half potentials together. OK, so it's, <laughs> let's say exactly what calculation we're going to do. So what's the rest of this calculation? So plus uh, 0.7. Good, that is right. So the equation that you're using is that we are taking the reduction potential from the cathode and we're adding the oxidation potential from the anode. To me, this is the most logical equation for finding the cell potential. It just makes sense that we just combine the two half potentials. Um, and it makes sense that we should use the reduction potential from the cathode, because reduction is happening at the cathode. We should use the oxidation potential from the anode, because oxidation is happening there. We might as well get an answer for that. What, what would that be? 1.10. And what would be the units on that? Volts. Good. Now, there is another equation for this that you usually will see in the book. Oh, by the way, I should say this is all the standard potentials. Because we used the numbers from the table, and the numbers from the table were standard potentials. So this must be the standard cell potential. Now, this equation is not the equation that the textbooks usually use, unfortunately. Usually, textbooks write this equation. Um, but do you see why these are the equivalent equation? They're the same exact thing. Um, here, they're using the reduction potential at the anode, but they're subtracting it. Well, subtracting the uh, reduction potential is the same as adding the oxidation potential, right? Because the oxidation is just the negative of the reduction potential. All right. Um, I think this equation makes more sense because we're not, we're not doing reduction at the end of it. We're doing oxidation. The reason that the textbooks use this is because they think that they're saving you a step because the tables are only in terms of reduction potentials. So they like to use, since all the tables talk about the reduction potentials, they like to use an equation that only has reduction potentials. Um, and, and then they just correct for the fact that this is a reduction potential at the anode by putting a negative sign in front of it. Uh, but I think we have more intuition if we actually use this equation. Or you, can, uh, or you can even do it twice to check. The important thing is just to be very conscious about the signs, because one of the most common mistakes people make here is messing up the signs. You can use either of these equations as long as you're consistent. The thing that's really bad about the textbook is that they actually don't write the equation like this. They write it like this. And then it doesn't become clear that this, these are both reduction potentials. They, um, they leave that out because they just assume that it's, it's conventional that people talk about reduction potentials. But that's one thing that I would uh, recommend. Whenever you're writing potentials for half reactions, it's always good to sp state explicitly whether it's a reduction potential or an oxidation potential. That way you're less likely to get confused, even though the textbooks don't do that. And even in your textbook, anytime you see a textbook reduction uh, potential, it's good to make a little note off to the side that that's a reduction potential. or or an oxidation potential, but usually it would be a reduction potential. So we can see there's, two, there's three different types of potentials here. We have reduction potentials for half reactions, we have oxidation potentials for half reactions, and we have the cell potential for the overall reaction. And those are all related to each other like this. 